All right, I'm here with what I think are two of the best cameras for YouTube, camera one and camera two. One of them is the Sony ZV-1, the other is the Sony ZV-10. One is full frame, one is crop sensor. Which one is which? I'm not going to tell you quite yet. We'll see if you can figure that out. Now, I also have what I think are the best lenses for YouTube on these cameras. I'll get more into that in a moment. I'm just going to put them through a couple different settings and we'll see how it looks. Is it going to be obvious as to which one is which? One of them costs a lot more than the other. Is it this one? Is it this one? Okay, this is the outside. We'll test the autofocus a little bit. And also just how everything looks. They're both opened up at f1.4. They both have the same ISO, the same shutter speed. Everything is virtually the same. Let's see how the performance does. Okay, I have no filters on or anything like that. Just tried to adjust the shutter speed for daylight. It's cloudy out. I thought it would be, I wouldn't be too overexposed. Well, let's go inside and see if it's going to be more of a difference in there. I can't really tell by looking on the monitors if one is much better than the other. So let's bring the light down a bit and see what happens. How about this one? How's this one looking? It's looking good. How about you? Are you the full frame or are you the crop sensor? Can we tell quite yet which one is which? I shoot in a lot of locations throughout my house for B-roll, things like that. So for me, it's very important that that camera that I use can do well in low light. But with f1.4 on crop sensor, is that enough to do low light? Well, I'll do some more tests in a little bit. I do a lot of B-roll stuff too. I like my stickers. Those are my favorite. Now, some of the things that I'm not testing, one of them has dynamic active state while the other does not. So I'm not gonna, this isn't a handheld comparison. 99% of the time I'm doing tripod shooting just like this for talking head stuff. So uh, stabilization in body doesn't really matter. And to be totally honest, the dynamic active stabe of the Sony ZV-E1 isn't quite as great as I originally thought that maybe it was. It's good, don't get me wrong, but if you want smooth footage, you gotta get a gimbal. So that doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go to the next location. I feel like I'm getting kind of surprised by one not the other. What's going on? How's the autofocus? How is it on you? How about on you? It's pretty low light in this room right now. Now if you're wondering why my bedroom looks like such a disaster, this is what happens when you're a stay-at-home dad and your kids get a stomach bug. Oh they've been puking for four days straight and it's better to have them in your room so you can catch them puking and help them out and clean it as opposed to any other bedroom. So we don't really love having projectile vomit everywhere. So that's why the bedroom looks like this. That's why I also haven't been posting many videos lately. I've still been doing the computer building stuff. I've been doing a lot of stuff on that, which I'm really excited about, but I'm considering selling one of my cameras. So I wanted to pit them side by side right now so I could see which one I should keep. So can we tell yet? I have to say, I'm kind of surprised with one. We'll see. I'm not gonna make any judgments until I've looked at the footage. Then I'll talk about the footage and go from there. To make this a fair fight, I have to put them both in 24p because at 30 frames per second, the ZV-E10 gets a cropped shot. So I want them to both be fair. I'm shooting in 24 frames per second. I believe the ZV-E10 can only shoot in 8-bit anyways. So let's see, how does 8-bit compare to 10-bit? We're gonna find out in a minute here. It's hard to tell from the screens. Oh, I don't know. All right, let's go down to my studio, take a look, see who's gonna win the contest. All right, have you been able to figure it out yet? Do you think this camera is the crop sensor ZV-E10 or the full frame ZV-E1? How about this one? How does this look? Does this look like it's a full frame or does this look like it might be the crop sensor? This is my usual talking head spot. I don't have it fully optimized for proper lighting and stuff, but still, it's good enough at the moment. We should be able to tell and get a good idea of which camera is which. All right, and the answer is, this is the full frame ZV-E1 with the f1.4 24 mil G Master lens. The lens is what, $1,500. The body new is $3,000. We're 4,500 plus tax. We're well over $5,000 for this setup. Over here, I've got the 16 mil Sigma f1.4. I believe it sells for five or $600 online. The camera body sells for about 800. So we're at 1,300 plus tax. So let's say we'll 15, $1,600. 1,500 bucks versus 5,000. That's a big difference right there. How does the quality look? I feel like this is this one's getting really washed out based on the screen. I'm not clipping apparently. 
see, I've got clipping on. It just, is it just the difference in 8-bit versus 10-bit? On the side screen here, especially in this environment, when we were upstairs in the bedroom there, this screen actually looked much better and clearer than, than this one. So I was very surprised because I thought this one was gonna smoke it. We'll see, I haven't looked at the footage yet, but I'm just letting you know what everything is, what I've been running, what my test has been, and then I'll go take a look at the footage and I'll give you my final thoughts uh, after using both of these cameras in just a bit, because to be honest, this has been my main setup. Uh, as you know, I bought the overhead bar and I, I was gonna try and do some pro level YouTube stuff, being able to talk while also having that second live shot. But it turns out I just, I don't do that. I use my main talking headshot and then when I'm done, if I want B-roll from overhead, I'll do it and I'll, I'll do the exact movement that I need to do at the time. Is it slower? Maybe, but I just think it's a better workflow for me. That way also I don't have extra money tied up in, in gear that I'm not using because I rarely use this camera and I'm building a PC and I want better PC components. <laughs> and you know, the monitors, the chairs, that stuff really starts to add up. I'm gonna be talking more about that in the future because as a lot of you know, I switched over to the Mac. I was using laptop doing all my video editing for quite some time, but right now I'm really enjoying having a desktop and just really settling in with a super comfy editing station. Plus the gaming is a lot of fun. Been jamming some Destiny 2 with a bud and Path of Exile 2 comes out later in the summer, hopefully for the open beta. And I, there's a lot of games I missed out on. I haven't played Cyberpunk and yada, yada, yada. So I'm loving the gaming right now, which is why I'm loving the PC. But anyway, back to these cameras. The ZV-E10, I had bought the ZV-E1 first, but I thought that the ZV-E10 was gonna be very similar as far as menus and a lot of features goes. Because they're named the same, you'd think that one is just the stripped down version of the other, the, the APS-C version of the full frame one, but it's not. It's a total generation behind. Like I was mentioning the active, the, the dynamic stave, it only shoots 8-bit, it doesn't do, thir it does 30 cropped at 4K. The menus are bad, the buttons, it's not even the same camera. The clipping, when I'm shooting, uh, or the auto peaking, sorry, when I'm using peaking, well, right now I have peaking turned on on both of them, but the peaking only seems to work when I'm in manual mode. It works when you're in automatic mode with the ZV-E1, which is nice because I can see the red, I have it spot where right now my watch is in focus. I can tell what's in focus, my eyes, my fingers. It's so cool. I love that feature. It's so great when you're doing B-roll, just having that the peaking live so you can tell what what's staying in focus. With this, you can do it, like I said, in manual mode, but with auto, it doesn't have that. I, it's just a little feature where I'm like, it says it's turned on, why isn't it working? It just doesn't seem to work in live mode. And these colors sure look so different. So I'm in S-Log2 right now on the ZV-E10. It doesn't have S-Log3. I'm in S-Log3 right now on and 10 bit with the ZV-E10-1. <laughs> Man, they're hard to say. Okay, I'm gonna go look at the footage. Let's put them side by side one last time. Okay. I'm gonna go look at the footage, then I'll come away with the conclusion. You know, to be totally honest, the little ZV-E10 did better than I thought that it would, especially in the low light situation. I did a video on my channel before versus the R6 versus my Sony a6400, and the R6 kinda smoked it, but I didn't have the best lenses for both of them. Maybe the FX30 would be even better for a crop sensor uh, in the low light, but. This did a really good job. I did a little bit of editing and post, bringing up shadows, trying to make match the colors as much as possible. So it would be a very fair fight because you're allowed to do that. That's part of the game. Just because you have the better gear doesn't mean you can't use the software to make your worse gear look better. If you can save money, why not? And that's kind of what it all comes down to. This is a third of the cost of this footage. Is it a third of the quality? No. There's that, the, the point of diminishing returns. Now, there's more to it than just that, but I think quality wise, you could build a channel of a million subscribers with this camera and this setup. You get yourself a decent microphone, you get some decent lighting, you're gonna be just fine, your audience won't care as long as your quality is good. This one, however, gives you just a little bit more room for creativity to tweak around with your footage however you'd like. But here's the thing, it's not just the quality that makes this camera better, it's the features like I talked about with the auto peaking, the buttons layout, the new menus, 
the autofocus is just a little bit better. The overall experience of using this camera for me is, is worth it. I'm making money on my channels now, between my two channels. It's starting to get there. I can justify spending more to have better gear. But before I was making money and I had a camera like this, I'd always wondered, I'm like, what's that next level of camera like? Getting to that full frame setup, is it really worth the money? And I needed to know. And I think the answer is no, not really. If you can get yourself a crop sensor with a Sigma 16 and you want a talking headshot, kind of like I'm doing, save your money and get this for sure. I do love my ZV-E1. It's given me the taste of full frame. I love that I can shoot in 4K 60. I can't do 4K 60 with the ZV-E10, but I don't really use it that often. Do you need that to build your channel? No, again, it's more of the features. I'm gonna keep mine. I might sell my little ZV-E10, not because it's not great, but just because I don't need it. I've invested a lot more time and effort into my ZV-E1. I love it. I love this glass. It's just slightly better than this one. I mean, geez, oh. I don't know, you know what, I, I don't even know. If I could sell that and get 5,000 bucks and use that money to invest in other gear, would that be a better decision for me? You know what, it might be. Oh, maybe I should do that. Oh, okay, I don't know. I'd love to know what you think below. I didn't do too many tests, but I think I did enough to get an idea of just how, what this camera is capable of. You can kind of see what this camera is capable of. I didn't push them in any extremes in one way or another. But yeah, all right, well that's it. I'm gonna go look at this footage now and I'm gonna go hum and haw some more to figure out exactly what I'm gonna do. I think at the very moment I am gonna sell my ZV-E1 because it doesn't shoot in 4K 60. It doesn't have the auto peaking during the live mode that I like. I actually don't mind the menus that much, although the older menus are a bit of a pain. I just don't like the button layout uh, as much as the newer one, so. But I do think that most people, especially if you're starting out, should probably buy this before you graduate to that. You can only appreciate this once you've had that footage to play around with. Honestly, when I'm tweaking in, in post between the 8-bit and the 10-bit footage, you can really get away with making the color and warmth and all the adjustments that you want. It really just looks fine, so. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down below. In case you missed my last video, check that out here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. If you did enjoy this video, please click the old like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. It's the only way I can grow. All right, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. <laughs> Dad!